Hi, this is Rick Adams from practicalcsm.com, and my latest podcast is with Dennis Geelan, a Canadian-based customer experience and innovation consultant and author of The Zero In Formula, a brand new book released this month. This podcast is all about his book and its relevance to the customer success profession. And because there was a lot to talk about, we ended up chatting for about 50 minutes. So as always, when the conversation turns out to be a little longer in duration, I've asked my team to cut it up into two shorter parts. So right now you are listening to part one and part two will be published very soon. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy the discussion. Hi, my name is Rick Adams from practicalcsm.com, and today I'm joined by Dennis Geelan, founder and president of Zero In, a Canadian-based customer experience and innovation consultancy, and he's also the author of The Zero In Formula, a brand new book released this month, which has already reached number one bestseller status uh, due to pre-orders on Amazon.ca. Dennis is a consultant, author, and speaker. He resides in Ontario, Canada, where he's run his Zero In consultancy business for the last two years. Through Zero In, Dennis works with companies and organizations who want to build engaging and loyal relationships with their customers, as well as a culture of innovation with their employees. His consultancy works with clients in multiple industries, including government, nonprofit, healthcare, insurance, energy, and sports and recreation. Prior to Zero In, Dennis held a number of senior management roles in a variety of sectors, including insurance, e-learning, e-finance, and software, providing him with a broad experience of modern business management requirements and techniques, including the needs for and benefits of customer success management. Dennis, a very warm welcome to you. It's great to have you here, and thank you very much for agreeing to come onto the podcast today to tell us about your new book, The Zero In Formula, and how its contents may be of use to those of us who are in the customer success management profession. Yeah, thank you for having me today, Rick. It's a real pleasure to be a guest on the podcast today. That's very kind of you for saying so. And obviously, I'm keen to get into talking about your book. But before we do that, uh, I think it would be nice to get to know you a little. So, Dennis, would you mind perhaps just providing us all with a brief introduction to who you are, your career to date, and also yeah, the specific situation you found yourself in that led you to deciding to write your book? Yes, great, great question. So, um, let me just back up uh, the, the truck a little bit, but, and, and I'll lead up to um, what prompted the idea for the book. Um, so it actually starts with the story of Zero Win. I'll, st I'll start there. Um, and everybody likes a good once upon a time story. So once upon a time, I was the person that like 99% of the population kind of subscribe to that model, that plan that society just kind of expects. You know, the, you, you go to school, you get a job, you get married, you buy a house, you have children, you put money away for retirement, and eventually, you know, when you hit 65 or whatever, you retire. And that's just kind of the script that everybody is supposed to follow. So once upon a time, that was me. So every day I was going into my corporate jobs, nine to five and following the script. But probably when I hit my mid to late thirties, I started asking myself, is there more? Is, is there more to it than this? Um, I didn't feel like I was really living a purpose driven life. I didn't really feel like at the end of it, I was gonna be able to look back and say, wow, I really did what I wanted to do. Uh, I enjoyed my jobs that I had, um, but there was something missing. And then one day uh, at the age of 43, I was laid off. The first time it had ever happened to me in my career. Um, and because of that, I decided, well, now's the time. I can do something different. I can have a larger purpose. I can have more control over the rest of my life and, and how I want to shape that. So because of that, I started Zero In. And the idea there was help as many businesses as possible become more customer centric and innovative. Those are the things, and I'm sure we'll get into that on the podcast today, but those are the two things that I believe should be at the foundation of every business in order to set them up long term. So because I started Zero In, I started working with a lot of different local companies. Uh, in, in the beginning, it was 
you know, businesses in my geographic region. This was prior to COVID. So um, I would go, you know, be there on site with them in their boardrooms. I would hold workshops where I would rent conference spaces and companies would come. Uh, obviously, pre-COVID, we wouldn't even imagine doing that right now. Um, but then I, I uh, that was that was happening in, until I connected with a guy named Charles H. Green. Not sure if you're familiar, but um, he is a co-author of a book called The Trusted Advisor. And but 20 years ago, he started his own consultancy called Trusted Advisor Associates. So I connected with Charles because I was just, you know, wanting to pick his brain about, you know, here's where I am in my journey. What do you suggest I do next? And it was actually him that suggested that I write a book. He said that was the real turning point for him in his career. That's what really launched the Trusted Advisor Associates. Um, so ever since then, I, I was, you know, putting my head down um, and deciding, yes, what, let, let's, let me write this book. And then uh, when COVID hit, uh, that allowed me a lot more time and freedom to get the book finished. So long story, but uh, that's that's how the Zero In Formula book came to be. Very interesting. There's two particular things that I take out of that. Now, number one is that um, your experience, like so many, I think, so many people, you grow in the difficult times. <laughs> so had you have not been made redundant, perhaps you would still be that at the same position you were in in your mid-30s, wondering if there was more. So that's one thing that like, occurs to me is uh, some, sometimes like a bad thing is actually a good thing that just looks bad. Um, and then the, the second thing is the, the value of a good mentor. So that's, that's something else that I think is, is just immediately noting that fact as being something of, 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 quite of, of quite of interest. So thank you for that. Yes, I agree. Everyone likes a good story. And that was a good story. So, so thank you for that. And yes, absolutely. We want to talk about the book now. So, uh, so great, great to meet you. Great to get to know you. And a, a few months back, you were kind enough to share an early draft of your manuscript with me, which I read and really enjoyed. And of course, I now do have a, a, a copy of the final version as well, for which many thanks. I uh, appreciate that a lot um, and let's discuss it uh, and perhaps with a particular emphasis on why it might be useful um, as an addition to a customer success professional's own personal library because of course that's my audience is customer success management so uh, your book's full title is the zero in formula the definitive guide to building a disruptive and sustainable business through customer centric innovation so in your own words Dennis what is this book all about and why is your book any different from the hundreds if not thousands of other books about how to build and grow a successful business yes that that was probably the question i had to ask myself um, when first deciding to go ahead and write the book and then during the writing process why is this book going to be any different any more valuable than the hundreds or thousands of other business books out there um, so I decided I really need to have a focus and an audience for my book. The, the, the whole theme of the book is setting your business or team up for long-term success. So that was kind of the slant I took. If you look at the stats, they are staggering. So many new businesses fail. And I wanted a book that really got to the heart of why is that and how do you change it? So that's who this book is for. You're either starting a business and you want to make sure you have the right recipe for success because there's millions of books out there and a lot of them are just tiny pieces of the puzzle. Or you're a leader in a business and you want to make sure that you're continuing to set your business up for long-term success. So it can be very confusing to a new business owner out there or an existing business leader. There's so much information coming at you. Where, where do I focus? So this, this book talks about what are those main areas that you should be focusing on to have a solid foundation and what are the principles that that foundation needs to be rooted in. So I've tried to really simplify it and like the name of the book says, into a simple formula that hopefully everybody can relate to and, and find valuable. Okay, very interesting. So, of course, you you actually use the expression customer centric innovation within the title. So that's obviously an important term for you. So could you perhaps explain what exactly do you mean by customer centric innovation and why is it so important? Yeah, 
Well, I guess at, at the simplest level, customer-centric innovation could be described as finding new and better ways to add value for your customer. That's a very high level vague statement though. Um, so at the deeper level, what I really want to make sure people get out of this book is that customer centric and innovation don't have to be just buzzwords. I really want people to understand what I mean by being customer centric and being innovative. So it's, it's having those proper strategies and the proper tools to know and understand your customers, right? What does it really mean to have a, a business that's customer centric? And then instilling the proper principles and practices to have a culture of innovation in your business or team. Uh, you know, I, I find a lot of these um, terms get thrown around and it's reactive, right? Oh, customer complains, so we handled it really well. Well, does that really mean you're customer centric? Um, you know, an employee had an idea, uh, so we ran with it. Well, what if he didn't? <laughs> or what if she didn't have that idea? Um, you're being reactive. How do you be proactive and make this the root of your company so that everything you do is around knowing and understanding your customers and everything you do is around coming up with new and better ways of serving them? So that's what I mean by customer centric innovation. And obviously the book goes into a lot more detail around why that's important and, and how do you mm. do it. Mm. So I'm imagining a, a company with a really, really complicated product <laughs> and they keep making it more and more complicated. Uh, but what they do is they keep adding another chapter to their user guide. So they are customer centric in their belief because what they're doing is they are explaining in great detail how to use their product. No problem. And when their frustrated customers call them, they refer them to the user guide and say, it's all there. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it, we know it's complicated, but it's really great. And we know it really works well. And here's, here's the next chapter of the book with, with yet more stuff in it. But as you say, what they're, what they're, what they're failing to do is really get to the heart of, of the, the innovative side of, of, of that, which is they're not really innovating how to be more customer centric they're just doing what they always did which is adding more complication and then explaining it in more and more lengthy sort of terminology is that, exactly. that kind of what you're getting at yeah yeah and i would go so far as to say that uh, like you say there's a lot of companies like that oh, yes. and <laughs> and i would describe those as product centric companies they're all about their product and explaining their product to the customer. They're all about their product and adding new features and functions to that and then trying to sell that to the customer. That is not customer centric. That right. is product centric. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so there's another core concept contained in your book's title, uh, which is the idea of a disruptive and sustainable business. So again, let's just pick that apart a little as well. So what what is a disruptive and sustainable business and why would a business owner wish to focus on those qualities? Yeah, boy, who, who knew there would be so much to unpack just in the title of the book, right? But, well, right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so let me break that down. So there's two terms there, disruptive and sustainable. And, and again, those are two words that get thrown around a lot and, and, and can be buzzwords. So for me, disruptive means you have something unique that separates you from your competition in, in a good way, right? You've got this unique identifier uh, and it's based on adding more value to the market that you serve in new and different ways. That's when you hear the term, a disruptor came into the industry. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody has a unique, better, different way of serving your customers. That's a disruptor. So you want to be that company. You don't want to get disrupted. You want to be the disruptor. Um, and then on the sustainable side, it's just the ability to thrive long term and and i believe those two things go hand in hand that's why in the title of the book it says disruptive and sustainable um you, you really need to have one with the other mm -hmm. okay and finally of course you mentioned there's plenty of stuff in your title well i mean the most obvious thing to ask you about your title i think is the is what is the zero in formula right right Okay, so to try and boil things down in, in a simple formula for, for everyone reading the book, um, I've basically taking, taken my two major beliefs about 
business success and put them together into a formula. So my one basic belief is there's three main areas that every business needs to focus on in order to have a solid foundation. So those three areas are one, your purpose and your direction. Number two, your team collaboration. And number three, the individual skills and behaviors. So I'll explain that a little bit. Um, if you actually reverse that, if you start with individual skills and behaviors, um, and, and you see a lot of mistakes where businesses, even sports teams will do this, let's go out and find the most talented athletes. That's a winning formula. Well, if you only focus on talented athletes, um, that doesn't mean they know how to play well together. That doesn't mean they're not going to be selfish and just be there for their own individual goals, right? Uh, very important to have that, but not nearly as important as those um, talented athletes playing together. So that's that team collaboration piece. So, for, right. So for me, team collaboration trumps individual skills and behavior, both extremely important. But in, in order of operation, let's go to team collaboration. So in a business setting, that's um, what strategies, what tools, uh, how do we make sure that these talented employees that we have have the strategies and tools to be able to work well together. And then on top of that, uh, the number one priority, purpose and direction. So if we go back to the sports team analogy um, and say you've got a, a team of rowers, and they, you know, you've got really talented, strong rowers that practice and, you know, they exercise and they eat well and they, they um, row in sync. So they're constantly, you know, rowing the boat in a smooth motion. None of that means anything if the boat is pointed in the wrong direction. They're going to lose the race. That is not success. So just having strong rowers, not enough. Just having them practice together and row collaboratively. Great, but not enough. Pointing the boat in the right direction is the most important part, and that's where you need to start and then work your way down. So that's my, my, my first kind of overall belief about business. You have to have first a strong and appropriate purpose and direction, strong team collaboration, and then strong individual skills and behaviors. But then the next part is, well, what should those things be founded in? And that's where customer centric and innovation comes in. I believe that in order to have a strong purpose and direction, strong team collaboration and the proper individual skills and behaviors, you need to be building that all around being as customer centric and innovative as possible. So in the book, I, I put that into a nice, easy graphic formula. Um, and then the book goes through and explains how do you have a customer centric purpose and direction? How do you have, one that's built on innovation. How do you have proper team collaboration uh, strategies and tools around being customer centric and innovative? And how do you hire and retain the right employees? Uh, what skill sets and behaviors should you be looking for to have a customer centric and innovative company? And how do you motivate and incentivize those people? That in essence is the formula. Okay. No, that makes sense. And, uh, you know, I, I like your diagrams as well. I think they're good. I think they, they add something. Personally, you know, I like business tools. I use them a lot. And I think that the, the secret of a good business tool is one you can draw out yourself on a piece of paper. Uh, and, and, and you can with yours. So I think that, that, that that's quite cool. So you can sort of draw it out and think about it and you know, jot stuff down and then, um, you know, screw it up and throw it away and start again if you want to <laughs> it, it's, it's funny because uh, when i was writing the book i originally did not have the formula in a graphic like that it was more just here's what i believe and i was writing it out um and as i found and as i've talked with many other uh, writers the process of writing a book is a lot of rewriting um so I was about halfway through the manuscript when I actually decided, boy, this fits together in a nice graphic formula. That's interesting. So perhaps yeah. you didn't so much discover it as uncover it. it, it exactly. It, but, but then that meant uh, reformatting how yeah. I was yeah. laying this out in yeah. the book, rewriting yeah. the chapters. So even though it was a lot of work to rewrite it, it was, it was a pivotal and exciting point to say, ah, to now I think right. I've got something. Yes. Great. 
Great. Okay, cool. That's that's interesting in and of itself. But anyway, um, so look, we've discussed the overall themes of the book, um, Dennis. Let's, let's dig into some of its content. And uh, let, let's, let's start, in fact, right with the very beginning where you tell a little bit of a story. You describe three brothers, Mike, Chris, and Evan, um, and you compare their, their uh, ways of building their businesses with the story of the three little pigs to yeah. illustrate the importance both of customer centricity and of innovation. So perhaps you could briefly explain this story to us and why you felt it was important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was actually my editor's idea to uh, to start the book off with a nice fable or a parable that anybody can relate to. Um, and, you know, pretty blank canvas there. But so this is what I came up with was that story of Mike, Chris and Evan. So in a, in a short explanation, Mike, he's ego driven. He starts his business all with the idea of I want personal fame and fortune. So right off the bat, his purpose and direction is wrong, right? Then there's Chris, also ego-driven, but slightly different. He builds his business because he kind of subscribes to that motto of, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So he designs his business around selling uh, and designing and building things that he just loves to create. So ego-driven as well, but a little different than Mike. And then there's Evan. Evan is the customer centric of the three brothers. He takes the time to know and understand his market and how to add value to that market. And then he builds his business around there. So right off the bat, you can see purpose and direction in three different forms. And as, as you find out in the book, obviously three di very different paths. And then uh, no spoiler alert, but there's also a, a twist in the story there when the big bad wolf comes along. So uh, <laughs> hopefully that resonates with everybody and everybody can relate to the story of the three little pigs. Well, but, yes. If if yeah. you want to if you want to hear how the story ends, you have to buy the book. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so look, in essence, you're recommending that every business needs to develop a high level of what you describe as customer-centric innovation or CCI for short. So what do you see as being the key ingredients necessary for building high levels of CCI within a business? Right. So if, if you go back to the formula, it's the, the, you know, or to quote Simon Sinek, start with why, right? Your purpose and direction. So let's make sure that the purpose and the direction of our company is, is based around knowing and understanding our customers first and foremost, and finding new and better ways to add value to them. Okay, that's it for part one of my conversation with Dennis Geelan about his book, The Zero in Formula, and its relevance to us within the customer success profession. Please join me for the second and concluding part of our conversation, which will be released as a separate podcast very soon.